Well, friends, it is uh, Tuesday, August 30, 2022. We're in our second day this week of our study of uh, the story of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. I'm going to read to you just these two verses from uh, that I read uh, that were part of yesterday's meditation as well. They're verses 26 and 7 in Genesis 29. So you can turn to that, get out your coffee or your tea, your juice or your power drink, and here we go. Laban, this is the father of Rachel and Leah, says, It's not done in our country to give the younger Rachel before the older, the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving for another seven years. Uh, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus to maintain a fantasy, to love an ideal, and um, to keep up the fiction that our, our partner uh, is perfect in the face of the flaws that we all have as human beings. There's, it takes a lot of energy to ignore reality, in other words. And it, it, in doing it, it's really, we're subjecting ourselves to a form of delusion. And one of the things that fascinates me in our culture today is that uh, this kind of tendency that goes way back, we see it in Jacob, to over-romanticize uh, relationships and people, is also something that we, we, can, we do in the modern culture in a, in a much more... Um, insidious way and in fact it's moving into whole new realms and I'm talking about the fact that we create vicarious romantic experiences that's essentially what many films are and so we come to idolize figures that we don't really know that we meet on the screen or in videos and they become objects of our desire and this is of course exploited in the, in the sexuality industry through pornography but in addition to pornography, there's, there's new levels of this coming with virtual reality where people can encounter others virtually in, in, in kind of a pseudo form. Uh, th there are, in fact, robotic partners that companies are trying to construct that will be um, kind of mechanical lovers uh, that will uh, meet, meet, meet needs of different kinds for conversation, for companionship uh, of, of people. This is... Uh, this is creating, uh, in effect, uh, shadow realities. And, and, and as videos and books and experiences feed them, this creates competition for real relationships. It diminishes real re life partners. Because people develop these patterns of mental engagement with these unreal figures, and then the, the uh, internal figures begin to substitute for the actual romance we could have with real people. Uh, and so romance gets subtracted out of the context of actual human encounters, becomes artificial. And in that sense, it's, it's solipsistic. That's a word for uh, where we live in our own world. It becomes a kind of narcissism, an inward proje projection, rather than a risky adventure in outward relationships. Uh, virtual reality and robotic relationships are going to add a whole new dimension to this that, I, that frankly, it's hard for me to even uh, imagine myself. But I know that as romance is turned into a commercial commodity, it's not good for actual relationships. Uh, it has a way of deadening the soul and indeed killing uh, libido. Let's take some time to pray. Lord, uh, we do not want to allow the fantasy side of our lives to take over and become obsessive. We don't want to live in a false reality. Uh, we want to be real people with real relationships. Uh, where we're in touch with, uh, with the, the actual texture and reality of personalities and differences and challenges because that's all part of the way in which you intend us to grow and develop and turn outward rather than inward. So we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.